So now we understand the impact that substituents can have on the reactivity of the aromatic ring. What we want to do now is understand how substituents will impact the radio selectivity of a reaction on a substituted benzene. Okay, so to do that, to begin with, we need to uh, define some terminology. So here I show a mono substituted aromatic ring with just some generic Y substituent. Now we're going to refer to the positions on the aromatic ring relative to that substituent uh, by the names ortho, meta, and para. Okay, so the positions that are next to that substituent with the green circles around them are called the ortho positions. The ones with the pink two positions away are called meta, and then the one that's directly opposite the substituent is called the para position. Okay, so each substituent is going to have a uh, preference for subsequent reactions to occur at one of these three positions, or and sometimes it's two positions. Okay, and so here we have the uh, ortho, meta, and para products. Okay, so now if you think about it, if there was no preference um, that this uh, substituent um, in, endowed to the aromatic ring, uh, you would just expect a statistical mixture to result, right? So there's five total positions. Um, you would expect 20% reaction to occur at each of those. And so uh, the since the ortho uh, positions are degenerate and the meta are degenerate, um, you would expect 40% of an ortho product, 40% of a meta, and 20% of the para product if it was all just statistical. But that's not what we see, right? So we can look at a specific example. The nitration of this methoxy substituted benzene, which is called anisole, by the way. So this reaction is faster than benzene, uh, but what we, uh, when we look at the isomers that come out, we see that there's 31% ortho, 2% meta, and 67% para. Okay, so there's definitely a preference for the para, and, uh, um, and ortho is a, is a distant second, and then the meta is, is almost non-existent. So that's very far away from the statistical mixture that we might have expected. Look at another example, so nitration of nitrobenzene. So this is very much slower than benzene for the reasons that we discussed in the last video. But what we see here is that um, in terms of the ratio that comes out, we see very little of the ortho, very little of the para, um, but we see mostly the meta product. Okay, so these ratios are very different than what a statistical mixture would give us. And it turns out that uh, the, the faster than benzene, slower than benzene actually correlates to these ratios. So uh, things that are activating faster than benzene are going to go with an orthopara selectivity and things that are slower than benzene or deactivating are usually going to go with a meta selectivity. Um, and again, the oddballs are the halogens as we'll discuss. Okay, so, so there's our rules. Activating groups, direct ortho para, deactivating groups, usually direct meta. The uh, exception is the halogens, all right? So let's look at chlorobenzene, all right? So this is definitely slower than benzene, as we discussed. But when we look at the ratios, we see still a preference for the ortho and para positions with very little of the meta, okay? So that's why we say that they're the, the oddballs. They are deactivating, but they're still ortho para directing. So why do we see these regional selectivity patterns? Well, what we want to do is to think about the uh, intermediate cations that we're going to be generating when we uh, do the electrophilic aromatic substitution. Okay, so let's take, for example, um, phenol, which has this um, activating, uh, this resonance activating group. All right, now let's first imagine the meta reaction. If we reacted with the electrophile meta, what would we get? Well, we get this intermediate, uh, which we could draw in um, any of these different resonance forms, right? So the cation is spread around at those three positions. And it turns out that there's actually nothing terribly bad about this intermediate. Um, that, you know, it's, it's not especially unstable. Um, it looks okay. But if we compare this to uh, the, re the intermediates that we get if we react either ortho or para, and I'm just going to pick one, and we're just going to pick ortho, but the, the para would look um, very close to this, and you might, you might uh, draw the para for yourself. But if we react ortho, we get to this intermediate, right? And again, we can draw the other two. So we have these three resonance forms. But now there's a fourth resonance form 
uh, that's very special. And it's this one here. And so what we've been able to do in this resonance form is to engage the lone pair on that hydroxyl group to donate in and to give us this resonance form where now everything has a satisfied octet. Okay, and so uh, whenever you can stabilize a carbocation uh, with the lone pairs from an adjacent group, that is going to be a, a massive stabilizer for that carbocation, right? So we only get this resonance form if we react ortho, ortho or para, right? We don't get it for meta. So in this case, meta isn't bad, but ortho and para is way, way better. All right, so all activators direct ortho para, okay? So if they're going to increase the reaction, they're uh, also going to direct ortho and para, okay? Uh, in general, uh, any group with a lone pair that can donate to the aromatic ring, right? So a resonance donor um, will direct ortho para. And then the only ones you have to include with that are the halogens, um, which are technically deactivating, uh, but they are um, resonance donors and they certainly are ortho para directors. Okay, and then also alkyl groups and, and aromatic groups um, also direct ortho para, right? So alkyl groups are not resonance donors, but they are activating and they absolutely direct ortho para. And you might consider why that is, just con consider cation stability. All right, what about the deactivators now? So um, first let's look at the ortho and para reaction of a deactivator. What would we get out of that? Okay, so here's the reaction ortho to this aldehyde functionality, and we would get one, two, and three resonance forms, but the, these aren't so good, and this one is the worst of all. So if we think about um, a slight variation of this resonance form, we might uh, actually look at a, a resonance form of the carbonyl where we put the electron density on the oxygen, and we leave behind then a carbocation at that position. Now what we've got is two carbocations next to each other, and this is absolutely awful. This is an absolutely uh, unstable situation. And if you think about it, you know that a carbocation is electron deficient. It is cationic because it doesn't have all the electrons it wants. So now if you're going to add an electron withdrawing group to that cation, that's just going to be much, much worse, right? Because you're further pulling away electron density from that already deficient carbocation. So this resonance form is absolutely horrible and it very much destabilizes the reaction um, at the ortho and para positions um, for uh, things that are substituted with resonance deactivators. Okay, so very unhappy. If we now consider the meta reaction, right, so we react meta to that electron withdrawing group, we get these three resonance forms. Now, there's nothing good about this, to be honest, because we still have inductive um, withdrawal of um, electron density from the aromatic ring, for, so from that cation intermediate, which is still bad, but it at least isn't as bad as trying to put that um, those two cations next to each other, okay? So in this case, ortho, uh, so the meta reaction is bad, but the ortho and para reaction is much, much worse, right? So that's actually the opposite of the ortho para directors, where meta is okay, ortho para is way better. In the deactivating case, we have meta is bad, ortho para is much, much worse, okay? All right, so in general, any resonance electron withdrawing group is going to be deactivating and meta directing. So those two things are going to go together with resonance withdrawers. Um, the adducts are the halogens. So uh, even though these are technically deactivating groups um, by induction, their resonance donation will still lead them to stabilize the ortho and para uh, reactivity more than at the meta positions. Okay, so we can go back to this chart now and, and now we can sort of see the whole picture of how substituents affect uh, subsequent EAS reactions. So we have now both the reactivity in terms of activating, weakly deactivating and strongly deactivating, and then we have their directing effects. So all activating groups are orthopara directing but also the weakly deactivating halogens are also ortho para directing. And then anything that's strongly deactivating um, is going to be a meta director.